Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is going to be fun. So, does a radio, a new radio, have a place in 2022? Have we moved way beyond this? Or are there any features that these radios offer that would be relevant and interesting in this era that we're living in where we have smart devices, smart homes, smart cars, smart everything? You know what I mean? I'm wondering if there is even a place for this. So we're going to take a look at two brand new radios, compare them, talk about the features, review both of them, give them a listen, and then I want your opinions about what you think. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. All right, so let's start with the Ocean Digital Portable Radio. This is the WR23F. So what we're going to do is we're going to bounce back and forth a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and start by unboxing this unit right here, and then we are going to unbox the other unit and kind of just bounce back and forth, back and forth. So that'll make it interesting, and it'll help us, I think, to compare them side by side. So yeah, Ocean Digital, they have some cool stuff. You know, this I think is the fourth digital uh, I should say, internet radio of theirs that we have reviewed. And that's their claim to fame is internet radios, which I so far have really, really enjoyed. And some people that are unfamiliar with it may be like, an internet, what on earth would you need an internet radio for? Because can't you do all of that on your phone? And as you know, you will discover as we march on with it, part of my mantra of late has been, what can we take away from our smartphones in terms of entertainment. You know what I mean? Like, can we decouple some of these experiences, listening to the radio, watching TV, listening to music, records, et cetera, et cetera. Can we pull that back away from the smartphones that we're tethered to day in and day out? So this is one way to do that because you can enjoy, you know, 40 to 50,000 internet radio stations without, you know, being tethered to your smart device or a computer. It does require a Wi-Fi signal, which I've thought before, if you didn't have one available, say, at your house or you were on the road or, or whatever, you could even connect it to your smartphone's hotspot. Okay, there we're back to the phone again, but you know what I mean. So initial thoughts are this thing looks good. It's got a good feel in the hand. It's slick looking. It's a little bit light, but I'll be really interested to see how it functions. I'm going to spend a couple of days with these radios and really you know, experience them and learn their ins and outs, their quirks, their detractors, their benefits, all that good stuff. But so far, so good. Okay, and here is the Redicus. It's pretty typical for them, pretty plain brown box. It does come in a cellophane wrap, but I took that off because it's just so reflective. Yeah, these are not designed to be, uh, these are not retail packaged, you know what I mean? They're designed to be mail order only. So, let's see what we got in here this looks like the user manual not much to that Oops. not much to that and there is an accessories box inside here well, these batteries just like that other reticus we recently reviewed you guys explained to me these are pretty common easily replaceable and apparently it's the same battery that is in the Tesla just many you know hundreds if not thousands of them and then we've got a USB a mini USB which is okay. I'd like to see more USB-Cs on things these days, though. That is sort of the wave of the future. Okay, so here is the unit itself. And yeah, this is interesting. It's got, oh, this is kind of cool. I like how that's sort of, you know, down in the recessed, and I think that's really smart. Three-band radio with MP3. Does have the TF card, which for me, that's a that's a huge feature to have that TF card. Good drag on the knob. That's where our battery will go. Yeah, I like I like being able to hook up the SD card or TF card, same thing. I think that that's a smart thing to have. I don't know if I'm the only one. Probably not. I mean, they wouldn't be you know making these if it was that way, but I really like that. Not sure what's on the back here. That's just a vent. Let's look at the label here. Yeah. So yeah, these guys you know have done great, great stuff. The last unit we reviewed from them didn't have uh, really great reception, but I it was very. I really love this. I love the design of that. But I had just gotten back from a road trip, and I failed to extend the antenna for the FM. Although the FM did okay, it was really the AM or medium wave and the short wave. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. 
So there's where the SD card is gonna go and the headphone jack and the power as well. So, all right, let me spend some time playing with this guy and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so let's start by looking at the Ocean Digital internet radio. Obviously the biggest difference between these two is this one is an internet radio, the other one is not. However, it's not as cut and dry as all that, as I found out. So I wanna kinda of show you how it works and then give you my thoughts as we do so. So to start it, you press and hold with, you know, for what seems like an eternity, this button up here before that turns on. Any flickering you see there, that's not happening to the naked eye, that's just uh, the camera making it look like that. So if you've had an Ocean Digital internet radio before, the screen will be very familiar. It's the same basic layout. There are small differences. I'm not going to go into a great detail here, uh, but basically it always defaults to the favorite screen where you can click OK and then it shows you, you know, your favorites. And additionally, you can save three of those favorites to the top here by long pressing each of these and then they become shortcut keys, which is really a cool feature. It's hard to pick three. I wish there was more buttons up there to do that with because you can save like, I think 50 presets, which I would never <laughs> need that many. Um, but then you can go to the internet radio uh, thing. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Um, that's kind of like where you start searching for things. You can also set up a local media center. It does have FM radio. It has Bluetooth, which will be a Bluetooth receiver. So it'll receive Bluetooth. It has a sleep timer. All uh, Every one of their units, including their rack mount unit, has a sleep timer. So uh, you configure Wi-Fi, which, you know, people say that's the hardest part and it does take a little bit of poking around to do it. It's not that big of a deal from my experience. Then you're back to this screen. So that's pretty much it. In terms of hard keys, um, you've got this button here, which if you push it once, will go to your region, which for us is the United States. So you can browse by region, or if you long press, it'll take you to the EQ menu and you can choose your EQ settings over here. You've got the snooze alarm, the if you wanna fall asleep to this, and then back up here is yet another way to get to your favorites. Um, on the bottom, we've got rubberized feet and little plastic feet as well. These are clearly just little you know, rubber stickers, silicone stickers, but it does sit nicely, I guess, if you wanted just to you know have it stand alone. There's nothing on this side, there's nothing on this side, there's nothing else on the bottom. We already looked at the top. I wish this was a navigational wheel. A lot of the Ocean Digital radios have a jog wheel to navigate, which is really nice. This one does not. Looking at the back here, you've got the antenna, which protrudes quite a bit off of the back there. We've got a USB-C connection, which is good. I like USB-C because you can attach it either upside or down. There's, if I do a mini USB, I'm always wrong the first try, you know? <laughs> With this, it's like kind of like the lightning port on an iPhone. You don't have to, it doesn't matter which side you're connecting it on, upside or downside. Uh, we've got a little LED indicator light and a headphone jack as well. I don't particularly like having the this I don't mind because it's not like it's going to sit there connected to power all the time you could but it's got an internally rechargeable battery more on that in a minute but the headphone jack that's you know that kind of ruins the mojo of this being like a pocket thing you know what I mean like you can't lay it flat because the cord will be sticking out the back and then you've got this protruding antenna thing which almost acts like a kickstand I wonder if that's why they did that <laughs> actually I don't know but I would much prefer to have this, you know, on the side or the top. That would be, that would be my preference there. Okay, so let's go ahead and surf around a little bit in the menu system. Again, I wish that this was a jog control for the menu. Most of them have that. This one does not. It's got the this kind of trackpad, D-pad thing, and these arrows on this ring are, you know, click buttons that go up, down, left, or right. And then this is a click button as well. It doesn't, it's not a scroller. It doesn't, you know, scroll. So if you go into this internet radio menu, you've got three options, your history, the regular SkyTune menu, and the search. So the search obviously is where you would, you know, search for whatever you want to find. And you, this is something you will have to do because there is, you know, 40 to 50,000 choices out there. So usually I go to contains. Now this is where, this is where, this, this system of, you know, selecting characters 
really lax because this is something you will do fairly often with internet radio is search, right? But this is not intuitive, or I shouldn't say it's not intuitive, it's not fast. So if I wanna search for just, you know, to you know, make this go faster, let's say we just wanna do CNN radio. So up and down on this, it scrolls through a list of characters, which it abbreviates on the sides. And then as you get closer, it shows you every choice that you have. You can also press and hold. And there you go. You can go through the whole QWERTY keyboard list of characters, as it were. So it takes a lot of clicking. And these aren't, you know, these buttons are a little mushy. They're not the, you know, sharpest, snappiest buttons. So it also, sometimes I get, you know, confused which direction I'm going. Like it'll look like I'm going to the left when really going to the right. I don't know why that happens to me, <laughs> but it does. So we just want to do CNN. So C, we choose C and it puts the C in there. If you want to go back and, you know, change that, you have to hit the back arrow and then you can, you know, pick the letter that you want. And because it's putting the same one in there, I have to say, no, I'm going to go to A and then back to C. I really meant to put in, now where am I? See, I lost myself with them. How did I get to the numbers that quick? That was weird. I have to put in C because it thinks I'm making a mistake. All right, so now I want to put in another letter, C-N-N. -N. So, dang it, see? It's not intuitive in that regard. Like, I started going up to the numbers when I felt like I was going down. This should be down to the right, I think, but it's not. It's up to go to the right and down to go to the left, which is, you know, Okay, now we've put in numbers that I want. Okay, and we're on C again somehow. So I think it defaulted because I let go of that. All right, so we want N. So we go to N, click N. Well, N again, so I click N. Nope, doesn't believe me, so I have to go off of N by going to another character and then back to N and then press. Okay, that now we have the characters in. <laughs> now we press and hold to search. And it says, please wait, and it gives you your choices. So. We pick the one that we want. And as you can see, there's 13 choices just with the word CNN in it. So if I want to listen to, let's find something interesting. Um, here's a Spanish language channel, it looks like. So we're going to click on that. And then up here, this is the volume. So we're going to rotate this. Doesn't sound like CNN to me. Okay. But that's the essence of it. Now, once you pick your station, it gives you the format that it's broadcasting. In this in this instance, it's, okay, why is it reconnecting? Could have lost the connection, had to reconnect. Um, so this is an AAC compression at 30, 32 kilobits per second and a sample rate of 22,000 hertz in two channels, so probably stereo. That's pretty low bandwidth. And you're, you know, you're kind of limited to what is out there. They don't give you a whole lot of choice. If we hit the back arrow, we should be able to go up here and pick something else. Typically, the music stations are 128K stereo streams in 44.1 uh, in an MP3 format. So let's go ahead and connect to the CNN TV audio. This is cool. So there we go, MP3, 128K. He's pleading to the West for more help to defend his people. A little quiet, this station, anyway. I've got that it's cranked, and it's just yes, adequate. It's your humanitarian duty to protect us. So if I want to favorite that station, I'm going to press and hold the heart up here, and you'll see this little thing pop up here, like downloading symbol or whatever. Or I could have pressed and held these, but I already have these loaded up with three favorites. And yeah, so let's go back to the main menu again. Um, let's go back to here. So this option here, if you don't search like we just did, you can browse. So you can search in a variety of different ways. Let's uh, search by region and let's find something in europe and let's pick country here let's see let's pick finland finland by most popular fin finland by genre and then you have the ability to just listen to that station takes a second to connect see what kind of quality you get so 67k it's pretty low bandwidth AAC, 48 hertz, two channels. Now, one thing I, for me, one reason why I like internet radio is it reminds me of the way I felt about shortwave in the 90s, where there was a whole world to explore. There was so much out there. It was like discovering things. You know, we just very barely scratched the surface, as you can tell. 
there's you know literally 50,000 plus stations. Now, if you don't want to, you'll notice that this thing connects to something called SkyTune. And in previous internet videos, internet radio videos I've done, people have said, well, what if SkyTune goes away? What happens if SkyTune goes away? So I don't anticipate that that would happen, but you can always go into the web interface on this. If you go into settings and, and it'll show the IP address that this has, uh, this is connected to my local Wi-Fi router. It'll show you the IP address, and you just take that IP address. That's a 10.0.0. whatever. Uh, the fourth octet is the only difference. Uh, take that IP address, put that into a browser, and then you have a, a GUI where you can go in there and manually save channels. For instance, the Patsy Cline station that I like is not in the SkyTune directory, so I manually enter the URL for that. And then, you know, you got a little bit of control there, so that's kind of nice as well. And that's the essence of this unit. I feel that the sound quality is good. The speaker is, you know, it's good. It's about what you'd expect for something like this. Um, you know, my biggest issue I felt was this protruding from here, this protruding from here. And it is kind of light. This is a pretty lightweight deal. It, slightly textured ABS plastic. Um, but it, it's a good listen. It's, it's really fun to listen to at night when you're just... Uh, just laying there. If you if you don't fall asleep as fast as your partner does, and you want to, you know, just kill some time instead of reading a book, maybe just browse internet uh, radio. There's lots of cool stuff out there. This is also a fun way to listen to the news without having to stare at a blaring screen. And I was doing that recently with you know CNN and some other news sources as well. Uh, the buttons are a little mushy. This this interface is not as good as I would like it. By the way, to shut it off, press and hold up here. I have another one of their radios that says, time to sleep now, goodbye, or something like that <laughs> when you shut off. This one just shuts off. And that's it. Uh, it's rechargeable. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, the battery should be accessible. You should be able, it's just got one of those, you know, blue. In fact, I've got one off camera here. So let me show you what kind of battery it uses. It uses one of these types of rechargeable batteries, which, you know, you guys told me all about in a recent video, apparently. A bunch of these is what makes up a Tesla rechargeable battery system. These are also used in vapes and other electronics as well and some gimbals and things. But apparently there's one of these in there, but they should make this removable, user removable, so that you don't have to, you know, worry about, you know, the thing dying at some point. You know, some people, like you and I could probably, you know, go in there and that would void the warranty. You're not supposed to do it. You could shock yourself. You could put an eye out with that thing. But you and I could probably figure it out. But it should be more user replaceable, in my opinion. So Redicus has this ability to make the basic radio in about 600 different ways. <laughs> they slice and dice an AM, FM radio in so many different ways and styles and interfaces with different features that if you are a radio nut, as I am, you will find one that you will like. Over then the prices are decent. They're good. And I think they're cool. The quality, the build quality is good. The one we received, we reviewed last of theirs a couple, a few days ago, maybe about a week ago, had some reception issues, but I had just returned from a long road trip and forgot to extend the antenna. <laughs> so that could have been the problem. Although this is only for FM. The AM would be an internal ferrite rod antenna anyway. And it's, it had issues with that too. So um, that being said, Redicus has been, has been really good. It's got this nice leatherette strap if you like those. I personally don't. I usually take those off. Uh, one thing that this, this does have a few bells and whistles. This isn't just a plain Jane AM FM radio. They have those if you like those. But this has some features, which is why I thought it would be an interesting comparison to the other one. Uh, headphone jack on the side, not the back. That's a win. That's smart. TF card, same thing as an SD card. So you can load up your MP3s. For me, that's brilliant because I love listening to movie audio and ambient audio and things I load up on an SD card. And it is a rechargeable battery like the other radio. This one uses the micro USB, which is a little bit older and you have to get it that's oriented in a certain way. And I always put it in backwards. Five volt power supply. On the back here, we've got the label. And then this is smart. The battery is replaceable. It is that larger uh, cell battery that we've seen on a few different things lately. So that's smart. This I believe is just an air vent. Over here we've got an on and off knob and then a tuning dial up here. Now notice the top here. This 
is, <laughs> I love this. This is genius. So notice how the FM antenna is recessed in there. In fact, it doesn't really even protrude whatsoever from the top of the cabinet. It is completely recessed, but the wood grain and kind of the inset give me total early 80s vibes. Like this is very, even though I never had anything quite like this before, this somehow reminds me of my childhood. This is like early 80s uh, stimuli going on here with the wood grain and the sort of recessed thing. I remember like board games and toys having like these kind of rounded recessed areas. It may be silly to you guys, but to me, those are the little cues I pick up on. I love the... Uh, uh, the way the script is applied here, nice and bold. It's a three band radio with MP3. On the front, we run into one of the more interesting <laughs> front panels I've ever seen. Oh yeah, yeah, before I forget, it doesn't have rubberized feet, so it should, but it doesn't. It has just like these little plastic nubs. So if you put it here, it just you know slides around on a smooth surface. But back to this. So you've got a speaker that's adequate in my experience. We'll listen to it here in a minute. But so I saw this and I'm like, oh, digital display. Awesome. We'll have a nice digital radio tuner. Nope. We got the analog indicator, not an analog tuner. It's actually a digital tuner, but you don't, there's no presets. There's no saving stations. You're just turning this knob, which is from an ergonomic standpoint, holding the radio and being, if you're right-handed and being able to, you know, roll through the dial like this is that's genius. That's really good. That's really good design. Uh, I like that a lot. So there's three there's three indicators for FM, AM, and shortwave. And unlike the last time we did this, I'm going to extend the antenna, which does go out quite a ways. Let's see if I can get that all in frame there. No, I can't quite get it all in frame. But it's a it's a good hefty antenna. And when you turn it on, you just roll this down. It snaps to the on position. Now this is where things get really weird. Now let's look at the controls. So you've got a uh, a switch to go between the three radio bands, that's fine. Then you got this M, what in the world is M? Well, it turns out that M is menu. And it's it's not just a menu, it's more accurately a selector switch. So it goes between the TF card, which takes a second to load, and starts playing whatever it played last. And then if you click it again, I should say mush it, because these are pretty mushy buttons. If I push it again, it should go back to the radio. It looks like it's trying to load the, yeah, it's trying to load that. So maybe this is on the radio. Okay, so it goes back to the radio. Now, what does 004 mean? That's the next mystery. It's a timer, and I don't know why or how to control it or how to turn it off. You can long press this and set the time. That may override the timer. But otherwise, if you're in radio mode, it's just a timer. So if you have an allotment that your spouse gives you for listening to the radio, this will be a really handy feature because you can say, you know what, I've only got five minutes that I'm allowed to listen to the radio before i got to do my chores. And, and there you go. You're, <laughs> you're golden. For the rest of us, I, that's, a, that's a bizarre use of that real estate on that screen there. I think that's just, just bizarre. And then once you're in radio mode, this button over here, the play pause button for MP3 is just, you know, lights up the display. Next interesting thing is when I turn this off, if I shut the radio off, the display stays on. And then it shuts off after a period of time, but it's just kind of weird. It's like I shut it off and it's still making light. It should be able to shut the thing off instantly. And then the this uh, LCD display will remain on for a period of time. I think it goes blank after a while. Um, and the timer's still going up. What the heck? We shut it off. You, you get in trouble. This thing will get you in trouble with your spouse because you'll. You, I only had five minutes and I turned it off at five. I swear, but it says six. You know, it's just really bizarre. Uh, let's listen to the radio a little bit. Let's start with FM. This is a classical radio station. Hear that clipping? Clearly a digital tuner. Continue his career. Maybe it's. It's got a lot of stations available, a good reception. It's a very narrow adjustment. Now, when you don't have a fine tuning dial adjustment, because they're not really doing that on a lot of radios these days, the digital tuner is actually nice because once you hit a station, you're on it. You're on it 100% or you're off of it 100%. There's not much in between. So once you set it, it's usually on there really well. Okay, so that's FM. Let's go to AM says amp, medium wave on here, but it's the same thing. Now this confused me at first because it sounds a little bit like an analog tuner. 
You hear that static rising and falling. But you'll notice there's still the clipping in the background. So it's still digital. And then we go over to media or shortwave and there's just nothing out there. I played with this in detail, tried to pick something up. It is daytime, but even at nighttime these oops. No, there's something else. Even at nighttime, you just can't pick up anything anymore, it seems, which is a real bummer. So shortwave is just not as exciting as it used to be. So let's go ahead and go over to the SD card side of the house and play with that a little bit. I'll zoom this in so we can see that. You'll see like the repeat all arrows there, which is just the only choice. You can't adjust it or anything. And so I got some music loaded up here, some Glenn Miller. You can click through it, adjust it that way. If you want to skip forward 10 songs at a time, you can press and hold that and you will be able to do that. So yeah, it's just some big band music. So it's not like super high fidelity, which is funny because when, let me see if I can get it to do this. So if I turn it off all the way and give it a second for that display to realize I'm serious, it comes up with this screen that says hi-fi, which is really hilarious in my opinion, because it's like, how do you know if it's hi-fi? You know what I mean? What if I have, you know, very, oh, I do. I have, that was, that was not hi-fi music, my friends. That was like Glenn Miller or something. Maybe I have to take the SD card slot out, the card out in order for it to do that. Let's try. So it goes, yeah. So there, hi-fi. How do you know? Apparently that's what it says when you don't have a card in the slot and you switch to the SD card slot input. So yeah, that's about it. It's a, um, it's interesting little radio. It's an interesting little radio. For the, well, before I forget, the SD cards um, are micro SD cards, and it will take a uh, either an MP3 file. I'm not sure the resolution options. I've got a various ones on here. It seemed to play them all, and WMA as well. Okay, so what are my final thoughts? On one side of the house, we've got the Redicus TR613 AM FM radio with shortwave SD card. And on the other side, we have the Ocean Digital what model is this? WR23F portable internet radio. They're not priced alike. This one is, you know, I think $27 or so. This one is like 70 some odd dollars or so. They have the very similar form factor. I like the fact that this one omits the wrist strap because to me that's a feature that I would never, you know, never need. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I love the way that the Redicus hides the antenna recessed in the top this one it's just i don't like how it protrudes and i also don't like how the headphone jack is down there the headphone jack should be on the side like this or on the top the only reason i can see why they would do that is maybe to make it have a kickstand kind of action but it's kind of too low for that i do like that the knob for this is right there on the right it makes it easy to tune this one is kind of nice to have the volume over there but you know these are both set up for right-handed people so if you're a lefty that may be kind of annoying for you. Tuning this thing, this menu system, as I was showing before, was kind of a kind of a bummer. It was kind of lame because <laughs> it takes a while and it, it has a mind of its own. Sometimes it'll undo what you just did. It'll think it knows what you want to do when you don't. Sound quality, I think the sound on this is a little bit better, but again, it's it's just a portable radio. This is something you would take out to the garage with you. This is something you would you know maybe maybe take on a walk. Uh, to the picnic, maybe into the kitchen while you do dishes. I do that sometimes. That's a good use case for portable. I, I love the fact that this, uh, this one has the replaceable rechargeable battery. And I love the fact that this one has the USB-C, but the battery should be replaceable in here. So like this has rubber feet. This one does not. And I like the fact, fact that this is all digital on this screen. Everything is, you know, digital where this kind of mixes analog and digital in a weird way. I think it's a, a failed opportunity with the use of that screen. And I wish this one had an SD card slot. This would be like everything if it had the SD card slot, but it does not. So, so let's do this. Let's add an SD card slot to the internet radio. Not really. I'm not going to do that mod. I don't think I could do that mod. But it would be cool if this had an, an SD card slot and Bluetooth out. If it transmitted Bluetooth out, then I would be able to use it at night with my Bluetooth sleep headphones. That would be 
absolutely beautiful. Because right now I'm having to use a CD player with Bluetooth out and it's kind of clunky and there's not even a CD play, not even a CD in there for that. So, and this one, uh, this is still cool, absolutely. Internet radio would be awesome. I think Redicus should get into that. That would be a really neat thing. So anyway, th those are my thoughts on those two. I really want to know what you think down below. So let me know, you know, if, if the prices justify the features, which one you would pick, which one is your favorite. And then let me close by talking about if there is a place for a radio in 2022. Okay, guys, that's going to do it. So is there a place for radios in 2022? I think yes, because here's the thing. As all the technology has gone into our smartphones and we can do anything from them, it's also become like a burden to have to go to this little ball and chain device to do everything. So the joy of listening to a record or a radio or a song or anything like that, shopping or everything is on the phone now. So uncoupling some of this, these experiences from your device that sits in your pocket, which <laughs> do you even use the phone? You know, half the time not. My kids didn't even know their smartphones had that feature, I think, for the first five years or so. So uncoupling that technology or that experience from the ball and chain device that we all have is a good thing, in my opinion. So yes, it is nice to forget where your phone is, leave it in the other room, leave it off, leave it on the charger, and take the radio and just go listen to the radio. Plus, there's never... There's no notifications, which is a wonderful and blessed thing. Your AM, FM radio, your internet radio is never going to notify you of something, which is so good. I love the fact it's never going to do that. So yes, a resounding yes for me. But again, I want to hear your opinions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check us out over on TikTok and consider joining the Vinyl Nation if you want to get that extra show a week and other benefits as well. So long for now, my friends. We will see you next time.